Hey there everybody, this just arrived. The box is actually a lot smaller than what I thought it was going to be. I knew it was small, but I just assumed it would be packed in a larger box. This is from a company called Woodcraft. Well, at least they're the ones I bought it from. So let's get it open and see what's in there. Okay, I ordered this with four day shipping and it wasn't supposed to arrive until Tuesday of next week and this thing shipped and arrived in in two days But what the heck is this in there? What? I didn't order no miracle here heck? Oh, yeah, it's actually got some weight. It's fairly heavy. It's all taped It's in bubble wrap as you can see and a plastic bag so let me chip away at that and try to get it out. Okay, there it is out of the bubble wrap. And there it is out of the plastic bag. Okay, look at that. You get a stainless steel emblem, I guess you would call it, that says bison. And the hole poked in there for the lanyard looks like his other horn which is pretty cool. And this, you can do anything you want with it. Take it off the axe, keep it as a souvenir. They said this is your, uh, kind of like your warranty card. You know, like this is your proof that you got a legit bison product here. Now, from what I know of them, they are made supposedly by hand, completely hand forged, They've been around since 1879, even though I never heard of them. From what I heard, they weren't available in the UK or the United States. And they just recently started selling in the UK and the United States. So I've heard. Uh, they're made in Germany. And as far as the steel goes, it just says that it's fine German steel. And it's hardened to 51 to 56 HRC. Which might seem a little soft. But you get this leather mask with it. that has the picture of a bison on it. And then it says bison there. It's got one, two, three, four, five brass, kind of bronzy brass looking rivets. Then a sixth one there that holds on the retention strap. And it has a matching kind of bronze snap there to lock it in place. And it's got a thick wilt. It looks like it's stitched okay. Just single stitch bank line. It's a very thick piece of leather. It's almost a suede. It's not... Only the stamped area is kind of glossy and polished, but it's, I don't know if it like changes colors when you wipe it one direction or the other, barely, like suede kind of does, but it's almost suede, which looks really cool. I actually like it. Okay, here is the hatchet. Oh, let's see. I hope it's a good one. Like I said, these have supposedly been around for like, a very long time. What was it? 1879 to 1979 would be a hundred years, you know? So, and we're in 2021. So, I mean, it's, they've been around for a while. It's got a nice flat uh, pole on it there. Pommel, if that's what you want to call it. I don't know what their symbol is. I guess that's a horseshoe. And I don't know what the 500-A stands for. But this is how they're hung. And I've seen axes that are hung better looking than this. So I'll just let you decide what you think of it. But you can see it has, it's American hickory is the handle. I don't think it says it anywhere other than they're advertising online. But look at how straight that grain is. That's like a, a darn near perfectly grained 
handle is running the right direction, at least it seems to be. And it's got a little bit of a swell here, kind of a little bit of a dip there for your palm. Then just the tiniest of little palm swells down there at the bottom. It has that lanyard hole. I'll probably put take this off and put some shock cord through there so I'll have a decent lanyard. But here's how the blade uh, thickness looks. It's kind of like one of those in-between camp hatchets where it's just thick enough to split without being a big thick splitter, but it's also thin enough to do decent chopping, you know? But it isn't solely set up to be just a, just a felling axe or a chopper, you know? So, not too shabby looking to look at it. I don't know how sharp it is. It's got the American hickory handle, and I don't know what the wedge is made of. It's got a wood wedge, and then it also has the stainless steel wedge. And uh, I may put some uh, glue of some type down in any like slight little gaps just to seal it up and harden it in there better. And then I'm going to oil the whole thing. I, I like Vaseline. It seems like it's just toxic enough that it prevents bacteria and stuff from growing. I've noticed I've been using this... Uh, this uh, otter wax it's like a boot wax but the one thing i've noticed about the otter wax is that when it sets long enough it uh it gets weird kind of sticky it's hard to clean off the blade and uh you know to get it all the way off so that you can redo it when it's time to clean them and i'm like i have it holds up better than vaseline as far as like in the short term but I think I'm just going to, for now, going to stick with Vaseline because it never grows any kind of mold or creepy weird stuff. And, it, like, it seems just toxic enough to keep all that kind of stuff at bay. But yet it, everything stays slick and oily and, like, well protected. And when it's time to take it off, you just run it under some hot water and it comes right off. And you can put your new coat on and... I just think it's a better product for knives and axes. I haven't found anything a whole lot better yet because I've tried so many different things and I keep coming back to just Vaseline because it works for this stuff. I do want to get this sticker off. I wish I could save it because it's all like written in German. It's like Jager Bill Bison 1879, 500 grams. 330 millimeters but yeah looks like it's on there straight like they hung it pretty straight and the blade looks nice and straight it's not warped to feel it it feels a bit grabby on the edge so i think it might have a pretty decently sharp edge on it it's just a little tiny 13 inch hatchet so you can see it, it isn't huge by any means okay here's a measurement I'm going to try to slow this down a little bit. I just got home from work and I drank a massive iced coffee. And uh, I think it's sending me into jabber jaw overdrive. But up to this tip right here is 13 and a half. But if you measure just the wood handle, you're looking at 13 inches, just like they said, a 13 inch. Uh, camp hatchet and let's see here for the head of it all right there close to five inches four and seven eighths and at about the widest point here you're looking at an inch and an eighth for the width and the cutting edge everyone cares about it's a good close to four inches so it's actually got a decent decent face on it there you can see the tape measure straight and this has a slight curve i like that it kind of has almost like that carpenter's axe kind of the bearded axe kind of look that's not really a nail puller there 
but I do like that you can really choke up on it. Get up in there if you were doing some fine carving. Even help with feather sticks if that's what you were using it for. So that's a neat little design. Kind of just locks your finger in right there. Yeah. I don't think any part of it is sharp enough to strike a, a fire steel. Except obviously the blade edge would. But I mean if you brought this part of it with you. That's like it got 90 degrees all over it. You could use it as a striker. <laughs> but that there's the measurements. Okay, here's that uh, Lowe's hardware store. It's called Project Source. It's got a 1.25 pound head on it. And it's American Hickory. And I like how it was hung. They did a very good job hanging this one. So I can't complain about the way they hung this at all. And it's actually a decent little 13-inch uh, axe, or hatchet, I mean. So I've the grain could have been a little better right here. You know, it's got a few little flaws on it, but it actually was working quite well. But this is just quickly machine made you know some are probably a lot crappier than others and you just get this cheapo little rubber blade protector with it whereas this is supposedly right up there with swedish axes maybe not quite as good as grand's force brooks i don't know but i guess they've been around for a long time and they've made axes for the german military and the german forest forestry service for extremely long time and they're hand forged and they're supposedly known to be like the German equivalent of a high end Swedish axe. It's just they only cost this I think I paid like nine to twelve bucks for. And this thing was like sixty four bucks. So I mean there's obviously a price difference. Cause you're getting up there into like the uh Husqvarna and Haltever Haltifers type hand forged stuff. But uh yeah. It's just, I don't know if I like the way they wedge this as much as I like the way that one there's wedged. But, and you can see, let me do this real quick. Okay, side by side, that's kind of the profile of them. You can see the one on the right, which is from uh, Lowe's, is, is a little thinner, more designed to be a chopper. But it did split good every time I used it. And the one on the left looks like it's a hair thicker, so it might do a little bit better uh, splitting. See that little light piece of wood right there? That might just be a little extra piece they crammed down in there because there may have been a gap like this one has. It almost looks like maybe it had a piece of wood in there and it may have fell out. But I'll just fill that up with like polymer or some type of glue and it, it'll be fine. I've never really had issues with anything like that, but I'm gonna put this away. You can see they're quite similar. The price, this is just factory mass produced. Costs about 12 bucks. This one's handmade, hand forged uh, in Germany and it's substantially more money. Okay, here's a sheet of printer paper. Get that focus. This is the hatchet. I haven't done anything to it. Haven't even wiped it off. This is right out of the package. Let's see if it arrived sharp at all. Yeah, I kind of figured it would be sharp because when you go like this, it definitely feels sharp, like it's grabbing your skin. I can tell it's got a couple little little micro burrs in there. If I strop that, it should sharpen it right up. But I mean, it's paper cutting sharp right out of the box. I can't complain. Okay. I just lightly, lightly and quickly stropped the edge of this on a leather strop with a little bit of green compound. Let's see if it helped like those edges at all. I 
I would say it did. It's, it's still, it's just a little bit better, but I'm making it clear down to the tip now. So, not bad. And you don't really need it any sharper for a hatchet or an axe. You can always make it sharper if that's what you really want, but for chopping in the wood and stuff, that's plenty good enough edge. But yeah, not too bad at all. I've already got a little dribble of uh, glue down in there. I don't think it's completely cured yet, but it's on the way. That'll toughen that up. The head has zero movement. It didn't have any movement before. Yeah, it, it seemed like it's on there quite snug. Like that ain't going nowhere. I did that more just for my own peace of mind. But uh, yeah, gonna, here's what it, how it goes into the sheath. Trying to make sure I do everything here. Okay, man, trying to do something left-handed when you're right-handed ain't easy. There it is. Goes on, wraps around the back of the pole there. And it actually covers quite a bit of the blade, so that's a really thick, nice quality axe mask that you get with it. And I, I may not oil this anytime soon because I like kind of like that suede look. But I will get some oil on the uh, axe head and on the handle here. Okay, they have it listed as a uh, one pound, 11 ounces, or one point. Uh, one pound head and uh, just says fine German steel hardened to 51 to 56 HRC on the head of it and it's on a 13 inch from the top here all the way to the bottom American hickory handle and uh, yeah it's not super heavy I do like that it has like the four inch blade because a lot of these, uh, like Swedish axes and things like that, some of them have it, but a lot of them only have that little three inch blade. And I'm like, I'm always up for a little extra blade there, you know. And I like having that extra up to four inches there. That's pretty good. I thought this like thing is ridiculous, but at the same time, it's kind of cool. You could hang it from the mirror in your truck or <laughs> although it might swing up and hit the windshield and break the windshield because it is stainless steel. But, uh, yeah, I'm trying to think if I covered everything. Made in Germany. I guess Bison, the company, has been hand-forging axes and hatchets and tools for over 125 years, according to their site. So, I mean, you could probably do a lot worse. It's just, I think nobody's really, or the vast majority of people haven't heard about them. Because I think they've just recently become available in the UK and the United States. So now you'll probably start seeing more and more of these. But yeah, from what I'm seeing so far, I think I think it's worth it. It's it's almost like seems like near Swedish quality hand forge type stuff, you know, for like a third the price, so not too shabby. Okay, that's all I have for this bison 13 inch hatchet. I just oiled it up. I don't know if you can tell the wood is shinier and darker now. Beautiful hickory handle. Nice straight grain. Really nice looking hand forged head. Seems like it's nice and straight. Got that all oiled up. You get the stainless steel little bison emblem that you can do whatever you want with that. And you get a little leather uh, lanyard. I'm gonna switch out for a uh, elastic shock cord. 
you get a really quality leather sheath. Like just the feel it, the weight of it, and the thickness of it, and the firmness of it. Like you can tell this is a really high, high quality sheath. You'd pay a small fortune if you bought that separately. But yep, there it is. If you're interested in a little German made camp hatchet, you could probably do a lot worse than this one. I have seen a couple, uh, I think they were reviews maybe on like Amazon or something like that. or Because I, I tried to find them on YouTube again I couldn't find them. So I think it might have just been reviews somewhere. Where some people complained and said the head was warped and some things like that. But they didn't really show pictures so who knows you know what they were talking about. Maybe it was warped. Because you could get a Grand Force Brooks that was uh, that had a flaw, you know. I mean, it happens. These are handmade, but who they could be talking about that. You don't know what they're talking about, you know. But the only I can't even say it's a complaint on mine, but it was just like I wouldn't have mind seeing like a double wedge in there or something, you know. It does. It has a wood and a round steel, but like if, like that cheapo hatchet I bought that has a uh, the, wed, the wood wedge and a double steel wedge. You know, I don't know if that's any better, though. This seems fine. It seems to be solid as a rock. So, you know, just saying. Uh, the steel being, it just says fine German steel. And uh, heat, heat treated to 51 to 56. So I'm assuming it's carbon. So I'm going to keep it oiled, of course, you know. But yeah, I think I paid like 64 bucks on it. You can get them on eBay or Amazon. And uh, they actually, I got mine on eBay from that Woodcraft company. And like I said, it was supposed to take about four days to arrive. And I got it in like two days. Like they just put it on UPS and got this thing to me so quick. Couldn't believe it was here today. <laughs> But yeah, I think it's a great looking little hatchet. Right up there with like decent Swedish hatchets. So if you're into that sort of thing, you might want to look into it. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is Joe Doomsday signing out.